Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them, just as a living Father sent me. And I live because of the Father, so that whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Flesh and blood, flesh and blood is all we need. In the year 1970, a great songwriter, I must say, Johnny Cash, took his wife, June, and their two children up to DeKalb County, Tennessee. They went out there to get away. And they went to this lovely place by a river, had a nice cliff going up the side. And they went there to cook some hot dogs and just have a picnic for the day. Johnny, in much delight to be with those who were his flesh and blood, decided that he would just take a little private excursion. And he took a little walk around the path that led him down to that river. And there he heard the movement of the stream. He smelled the pines. He felt the cool breeze from being under the willow tree. And he heard the birds chirping. He truly felt like he was a part of this beautiful creation. In this world, he sensed that he was a part of something that ran much deeper. And from that time, it made an impact to which he would forge lyrics to a song entitled Flesh and Blood. He goes on, and it's very natural. He talks about the cardinals and the songs that they make. He talks about the sounds of that river that he visited. And he said before the song, he's dedicating it to someone special who led him through the most difficult time in his life. So toward the end of the song, he wrote these particular lyrics. At the end, he says, so when this day was ended, I was still not satisfied, for I knew everything I touched would wither and would die. And love is all that will remain and grow from all these seed. Mother Nature's quite a lady, but you're the one I need. Flesh and blood, flesh and blood, and you're the one I need. I wonder if the man in black he would have given the name, would have made the song any more special to its hearers. Many can speculate. Maybe he was writing to, um, to his wife, or maybe he was writing about his children, or something of that nature. But when you really study the lyrics, you can see that he was attributing what was created in this world as a result of somebody who made it all happen, who forged and made those relationships Come together. What makes that water move and those birds chirp and the shade be cast? What makes it possible for us to even have family? What makes it so that it will last? I wonder too if um, Johnny Cash would have been uh, attuned to the readings to which we have here today, where we get to the conclusion of one particular character we've been following along this path for three particular weeks to his King David. I wonder if Johnny could relate to the life of King David as he wonders about the flesh and blood 
of the Savior of the world who came and died for him and wondered how it may have touched the life of another. King David, as you know, struggled mightily with adultery. Maybe that is also something that Johnny had something to sing about. Maybe it was a life of foolishness and drunkenness and debauchery, as we hear about later from St. Paul, to which I think that the songwriter could also relate to. But the sum of our sins does not define who we are in our existence. It's how we acknowledge the one who redeems us of our sins that does. Acknowledging that along life's pathway and giving special tribute to the one who died for us is most, most important. Paul would say that we need to sing psalms. Psalms of praise and thanksgiving and those wonderful hymns that lifts our spirit beyond the depths of our depravity and our misfortune and our mistakes and allows us to find sure footing in this natural order so that we will one day see Christ face to face in all eternity. There must be more to life. Have you ever come to that crossroads in your own life? Have you ever asked yourself, uh, is there more to this life? Do you take a special getaway trip from time to time? And do you walk in certain places where all the beauty of nature around you reminds you that there is something more to this life that keeps you bound to your existence, your purpose, and your destination? I hope so. I hope and pray that you can find that God lives within this world only to guide us to where he lives. So where does God live? Does he live by that little rippling brook in your life? Does God live in the places to where it can be quite frantic, quite busy, quite congested, places to where you can make many mistakes? God is everywhere. He is with us all the time. He is casting upon this world the seed of life, which is seen in each and every one of his followers. All of ye who believe in me, come to me and I will refresh you. I will redeem you, is what Jesus speaks upon our hearts. And if it elevates you to the point of writing it down and singing a song, well, that's extra good, because that's what we're called to do, to rejoice and to rejoice always when we know that we have found our Lord and he has found us, wherever that may be. I think Johnny uh, has an amazing life to which a lot of us can also relate to, but not just him, but maybe a little David, maybe a little Paul, maybe each and every one of us has that story and those lyrics impressed upon our own hearts to where we understand that the Lord is with us at all times. Everything that we see and touch and smell one day will wither and die. That's what we know as human beings. But as those who follow the Lord Christ, these things can take us to another place to where there is no death. And that brings us to the flesh and blood that Jesus is telling us and teaching us here today. Now, my last sermon that I gave you last Sunday, it, uh, it began with uh, the daily special for today is bread. It was our third Sunday, last Sunday, about bread. And here we are today, hearing once again with the sixth chapter of John. And so it must be important if those who archetype the lectionary continue on a fourth Sunday in a row in the same chapter, the gospel according to St. John, to really pay attention to what it means, this bread of life. This particular gospel <clears throat> opens a little differently than all the rest. All the rest are pointing to the great I am, one of the seven, which is I am the bread of life. And bread is now traversing to a whole new understanding 
of being alive, living bread. Not just bread, but living bread. And Jesus completely expands our understanding, our love and appreciation for God beyond the natural order by putting something that is super intense, definitive, and real. He says that this bread is my body, it is my flesh, and you are to eat it. This wine is my blood to which you are to drink it. Now, have you told many of your friends about this story who may not be believers? <laughs> that how do you think that they would respond to this? How do you think the people respond in the day of Christ when he said, not only is this my, the, I am the bread, but I am the living bread, which is the flesh to which you're to eat? Christians in the first three centuries were considered to be cannibalistic because of these words. Who in their right mind is going to eat a human being, flesh and blood? But what God is telling us through God's Son, the Christ, is that we don't even exist in the natural order unless he wills it. I've said this time and time again. There is nothing greater to which anything can exist. And our very ability to sit here and to breathe and that air and everything around us exists because God wills it. It was never just a big bang or a snap and boom, it just happened and God sits back and watches it all take place. He is actively in it and he is living within it to the place that is the most personal which is flesh and blood. Have you ever found yourself in a relational situation? Maybe you're, you face something such as separation, some type of loss, some type of death, maybe injury, um, just in a really bad place with another person to where you look them in the eyes and you say, now this is to be family, right? And you say, no matter what, we will always be together because we're what? Flesh and blood. There is something that is intricately related to how we relate with each other. Our family, the human family, is related by flesh and blood. Not only by what we birth into the world, but how we communicate with others in our world. We are interrelated, we are interwoven and God wills it to be so through his Son, the Christ. Jesus is inviting each and every one of us today to come forward, not simply to take bread, but to take living bread. We're able to step beyond this temporal world into that which is eternal when we take the sacrament of God's body and blood. It takes on a whole new meaning. It means and requires for us to go to a place to where we fully appreciate what God has done for us. So in closing, I think I will continue to borrow those wonderful lyrics with some form of modification to which God's word and sacrament visits us by the shores of our rivers and brooks of life to where we appreciate what God continues to do for us by sacrificing himself through his son Jesus so that we may live. So that when this day has ended, will you be satisfied? Or don't you know everything you touch will eventually wither and die? But love is all that will remain and grow from all the seed. And although Mother Nature is quite the lady, there is only one in whom all we need. Flesh and blood, flesh and blood. It is Jesus Christ to whom we need. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.